Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. She was wonderful. I know, that was impactful. I tried to grab her. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am here with the iconic, mesmerizing, talented, ah. <laughs> designer, philanthropist, Diana Posterberg. Hi. So I want to talk about the woman behind the brand. We know you grew up in Belgium. It was very different where you saw yourself, didn't look like the other girls, and you found this confidence at such an early age. Where did that come from? Well, <clears throat> well, if you want to go back to Belgium, then I think we have to go a little further. Uh, I, I'm going to imagine uh, occupied Belgium in 1944 and a young girl, 21 years old, who was doing resistance, uh, got captured and sent to the concentration camp, wow. where she spent 13 months in Auschwitz and in um, Ravensbrück. Survives, the war, survives it, and when she's found, she weighs 49 pounds. And uh, so she is shipped back to her home in Belgium. Her parents cannot believe that she's alive. And uh, her mother feeds her a little bit every 10 minutes, so she gains the weight. And after six months, her weight is back. Her fiancé, who was in Switzerland, comes back. Mm. They get married. And uh, the doctor says to the woman, you can absolutely not have a child. Because if you have a child, you will die, and your child will not be normal. Wow. And sure enough, nine months later, I was born, and I was not normal. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, TVM, to the planet. Welcome to the planet. <laughs> so, that's... That's my, the confidence. That's, well, it's not the confidence, but it's where I come from. Mm. I come from real ashes. Yeah. You know, I wasn't supposed to be there, and I was there. And then my mother really, really did not ever want me to be afraid. Fear was not an option. If I was afraid of the dark, she locked me in the closet. Mm. Today, she would get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but she made me fearless. I love and, that. And uh, so that's how it all began. And then I grew up as a little girl. I did look different than any other girl. <laughs> I did look different. I had black curly hair, and all my friends in Belgium had blonde, straight hair with bangs. So I did look different. And, uh, but I remember in front of the mirror, my mother had a big vanity in her bedroom. Mm -hmm. And I used to stare at, my, at myself for hours. Not that I thought I was beautiful, because I didn't but because I realized that I had control over that image. Wow. If I made faces, she made faces. If I turned around, she turned around. And that's when I realized, oh, I have control over her, right? So that also was a very important thing. So people ask me, what did you want to do? You know, what did you want to do when you grow up? And I did not know what I wanted to do, but I knew the kind of woman I wanted to, to be. be. That's fantastic. I wanted to be a woman in charge. And that means a woman who can pay her bill, a woman who can do exactly what men do. And why not, right? That's great. And so that's what I wanted to be. And I was lucky. I became that woman. And I became that woman because of a little dress. Just a little simple little dress. Uh, that's, that's also the dress that actually changed my career. Right. Eight years ago, my first major carpet was with a dear friend, Gabrielle Union, mm. and she asked me to bring her something from a vintage store that I owned in Soho, and I had this vintage DVF dress, and she wore it, and it went everywhere, and now I'm sitting with <laughs> the icon. So, so thank you for that moment. Thank you. Thank you. So anyway, for that little dress, so that little dress, you know, people say, I made that little dress. The truth is, that little dress made me. Voila. And, uh, and so, as I was gaining confidence, 
I was going around to stores, wrapping other, you know, wrapping women, and I was, I realized that I was sharing this newly acquired confidence, and so I established this relationship with women, and uh, and that that was it. Okay, that was a long time ago <laughs> because I am now an old woman. And I, and by the way, I embrace it fully. I'm 73 years old, so you know. And what does, and right now, what does the 73 year old Diana want to see shifting on the planet? Like some of the work that you're doing right now, you're shifting the planet. Like, well, what, else, what else would you like to see? Uh, what I, I mean, really the goal of my life right now is I wanted to be a woman in charge. People say, who is your customers? I said, the woman in charge. So in charge has always been this platform. Mm. And so this summer, I thought about it. What does it really mean to be in charge? Because I don't want it to be aggressive, mm. because we don't want to be aggressive. We still need men. Uh, so, <laughs> so to be in charge is first and foremost a commitment to ourselves. Mm. It's owning who we are. You own your imperfection, they become your asset. You own your vulnerability, it becomes your strength. So owning who you are, that is the most, being true to yourself is the most important thing. The relationship you have with yourself, the most important relationship in life is the one you have with, with yourself. yourself. Once you have that, any relationship is a plus and not a must. I love that. And then there's, and then there's, a, third, there's a third part, which is someone gave me this advice, an old man that I respect so much. His grandmother, who survived the genocide in Armenia, told him. And that is the only thing we have total control of is our character. Wow. We can lose our health, we can lose our wealth, we can lose our beauty, our family, even our freedom, but we never lose our character. character. So, the character, the relationship with ourselves, owning it, all of this is a little house that you put inside yourself that is the core of your strength. And that is what being in charge is. Wow. And then once you are in charge, then you can use, like, you know, I am in charge, so I can use, <laughs> I can use my voice, my experience, my knowledge, my, my connections in order to help others to be in charge. And so if you ask me today, what is the mission of my life, is to go and push the button in every woman and make them realize that all the strength and all the confidence is inside them. So if anyone in this moment... <laughs> so I guess the, the most amazing takeaway from that is like you just said, you said that button that everyone has. So if it's turned off, you want everybody to push that button and turn it on and realize that you are in charge and you have the power to turn that button on, right? That's right, but, but, but it requires practice. Yes. That means you have to be honest with yourself. That means you can't be delusional. It, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of work, but it's much, much easier. I love that. And, uh, and then, by the way, also, you know, people look at you and they think you're successful and you are successful, but that doesn't mean that you don't feel like a loser at least twice a week. <laughs> Only, only losers don't feel like losers. Mm. <laughs> you, you drop. By the, the way, best that gyms. works every time you say it. I, I mean, even to myself. <laughs> so, Dan, I would also love to talk about the foundation. And recently, you did a lot of great work in your, what you did in D.C. with the the awards that you were giving away and some of the honorees. I would love to talk about some of those women. Well, a few years ago, my son, we have a family foundation. My son said, you know, it would be nice for you to give an award. And, uh, and because then the, you could give money and exposure to women that you respect that are not known. And so, and so at first I was a little shy. And so I, uh, when we started with Tina Brown, the the Women in the World Conference, I, I, I launched the DVF Awards on the second night. Mm -hmm. And this year was our 11th anniversary. 
And this year we went and we, instead of doing it in New York, we did it in DC. And the Lifetime Award went to Ruth Ginsburg, Supreme Court Ginsburg. <laughs> and, and that was such an honor because you, you see, and it's very important that you give the Lifetime and the Inspirational Award to people who people really respect yeah. and know because then you get the exposure for the other people yes. who do amazing work but you know, won't get their name in the press. So you have to understand that. So it's very nice, it's really, and what we give these awards, we give money and exposure to these women who, has, who have had the strength to fight, the courage to survive, and the leadership to inspire. I love that, I love that. And then and there's another lady, that I, a very famous lady that I've been involved with, and her name is Lady Liberty. Oh. And, um, casual, I, casual, casual, the casual lady. And la well, but it all came that they wanted me to be so much on the board of um, Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, and I did not, I wasn't interested in being on another board. And then the man who wanted me read my book. I wrote a book called The Woman I Wanted to Be. And in my book, I, taught, I, I have a little thing that my mother used to, wrote to me. She said, God saved me, right, my mother who survived. Mm -hmm. God saved me. God saved me so that I can give you life. By giving you life, you give me my life back. You are my torch of freedom. Wow. So I was born with this torch of freedom so in my hand, which is also a responsibility, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and so this man from the board said, your mother said that, you have to accept it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I accepted this job. <laughs> and, and what I had to do is I had to raise money to build this museum and on Liberty Island, and I'm not very good at raising money, but somehow, she, Lady Liberty, is magic. And I really did raise a hundred million dollars. And I, I also <clears throat> wrote a book and, uh, and, and a beautiful documentary. If you, <clears throat> if you want to see it, it's on HBO, and it's called Lady Liberty, Mother of Exile. That's and um, it's very nice. Well, I, I'd like to say that your necklace, you're in charge. It sounds like you're definitely in charge. And I think the take, <laughs> I think the takeaway today, I would hope everyone, including myself, I now want to take even more charge of what's going on in my life. So I hope that what we've talked about and today. And remember, the first step and the most important. Don't be delusional. I was okay. <laughs> Commitment to, to yourself. yourself. Commitment to yourself. It's yourself. Listen to everyone. No. Hear everyone and listen to yourself. There we go. The perfect takeaway. Thank you. You done? I think so. I'll just wrap it up. We got some time. We have another minute 45. We have a minute. So I'm going to ask you a question. Tell me everything. He's a very, very, very stylish man. So what, <clears throat> what does style mean to you? Style for me is, it's so funny that you had that conversation about the mirror. The style for me is confidence. And when I do some of my fittings, a lot of times I bring a mirror, not for my clients to actually see what their reflection is once they try the clothes on. I make sure it's like more of portrait style. So I'm like, this is what's important. Everything is not valid. It's a bonus. It's a bonus, but this is what's very important. So for me, it's confidence. It doesn't matter what shape, what size, what color, where you're from, that's what you true. have. Well, it's but confidence. that's the thing is if you accept, if you own it, right? Yeah. You have a big nose. Own it, all of a sudden say, oh, she has such an interesting nose. Yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. It's all about confidence. So I, I, I lean into confidence. That's, <coughs> that's my thing for a kid who didn't have a lot of exposure and things like that. So. How I got into rooms was just my confidence, and I was always sure in my choices. Did you have a strong mother? Very strong mother and grandmother. See, that's wow. the answer. Well, it all it's comes from a strong a mother. Yes. So for me, it, it, it was you know, my, my journey with my mom and my grandmother. And now I'm here with the women, icon. Women. The icon, GBS. This anyway, is great. This is great, and we thank you guys, and we hope that you all take charge. Thank you.